Okay. Um, Hormoz, what is the uh, slogan of Iran Alive Ministries? And explain just a little bit about Iran Alive Ministries. Iran Alive is a ministry to reach out to Iran and plant churches and bring people to Christ, train leaders, and we've done that the last 12 years. So our mission statement says, transforming Iran into a Christian nation in this generation. That sounds like a big mission, but we see that promise in the Bible. We see that happening, and we believe if we do the right thing and the right strategy and work together, we can see Iran as a Christian nation in one generation. Okay. Where is that promised in the Bible? The promise in the Bible is in Jeremiah 49, 24 and on, talks about Iran and the future of Iran, which is uh, the land of Elam. But 49, 38 the Lord promises, I will set my throne in Iran. And that's a big promise, set my throne. What does it mean? That means a land and the people that who know Jesus, who worship him and also obey him. So it's, a, it's going to be a society where Jesus says, my word here is obeyed. So it's going to be a Christian land. And it says in Jeremiah 49, 39, that in the latter years, latter days, that the, he will restore the fortunes or bring back the captives of Elam. So again, that also lends itself toward what you're saying, just to comment on that for the listeners there. Right. Now, what I found fascinating in speaking with you is that before the Islamic Revolution in 1979, there was a very minuscule amount of Christians, Iranian Christians in Iran, but presently there's an abundance of them can you talk about those numbers? And then I wanted to ask you about how those, how the Lord is the primary methods that these Iranians are coming to the Lord. Well, uh, things have been uh, changing over the last 30 years. 30 years ago, at the time of Shah, there was freedom. Uh, Christians uh, were free to uh, gather. Missionaries were free to pass on the Bibles. And the missionaries who worked then, they tell me, if they distributed or attempted to distribute 100 Bibles, maybe one or two would accept it with reluctance. And, but it's totally changed. There were only a few hundred Muslim background believers then. Uh, there was freedom politically, socially, but there was no freedom spiritually. Iranians were closed. Now, 30 years of Islamic rule, people of Iran have come to conclusion that Islam is not the answer, it is the problem. Most of them are saying, we did try Islam in our personal lives, in my family, in the society, and Islam doesn't work. So the problem is Islam itself, and there is something fundamentally wrong with Islam. And that's why Iranians are rejecting Islam, and they're looking somewhere else. They're open to the gospel, but they won't come to Christ if we don't share it. That's why we need to get together, partner with each other to get the gospel inside Iran. Now, they're say uh, between a million to three million Iranians are, are Christians. So from only a few hundred, they've made a spiritual journey of rejecting Christianity to embracing Christianity. Okay, and is it safe to say that Iran is the number one growing country in the world in Christianity? Well, I've seen that openness over the last 12 years, we're reaching out to Iran directly, but it's not me saying. Uh, Operation World uh, has uh, done research. It's a, it's a mission organization in England. They've done research and they uh, produced this manual, Operation World Manual, many or most churches in America have a copy of that, the mission pastors especially. So, According to their research, Iran has the fastest growing evangelical population in the world. And number two is Afghanistan. Number 10 is Tajikistan. These are all Farsi-speaking countries that we reach out to. And okay, and your Iran is, uh, Live Ministries is reaching into those three countries in the Farsi language, is that correct? We reach out to the whole Middle East and Europe with uh, Farsi um, programs. But those are three countries that uh, we see a lot of result because they all speak Farsi. So by millions, they are receiving our signal, they're receiving our programs, and they're responding. Iran is number one, but Afghanistan, especially Tajikistan, we see many, many coming to Christ. Okay, so in addition to satellite television, what are the other primary methods that the Lord is using to bring Iranians to Christ? Well, satellite has been the ignition. Now, uh, Iranian Christians 
the numbers have been growing, the maturity has been growing. At this point, people are sharing the gospel with each other. These are other means. One is a life change. When somebody comes to Christ, the life, their lives are changed so dramatically that the whole family notices. So in Iran, it's normal for families to come to Christ. In other Islamic countries, when somebody comes to Christ, usually the whole family turns against them and the persecution comes from friends and family members. In Iran, it's not like that. In Iran, the norm is somebody comes to Christ, their friends and family come to Christ. So it's a personal witness, not just by word, but the life change, a supernatural life change of people. Number two, visions and dreams and miracles, normal in Iran. Let me tell you this story. This man called me on the air, on the live program, and uh, he was saying, he said, I, three months ago I had liver problem, and I called you, and you prayed for me, and I got healed, and I was saying, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And he was not excited. He had such a monotone voice, and then I prayed for others. I prayed for somebody with tumor. He got healed. One of my relatives had cancer. I prayed, and he, she got healed from her cancer. And here I was saying, oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. After three, four minutes of this, he got frustrated with me. He stopped. He said, Pastor Hormoz, why are you so excited? Have you read your Bible? This is normal. It must happen. I mean, he had no emotions. And here I was so excited. For him, it was normal. For those people, it is normal that Jesus does miracles. Even in, in Quran, they look at Jesus as a miracle worker. Okay, so through satellite television, the miracles, the healings, the dreams and visions, the testimonies of changed lives, yeah. now a million, maybe two, three million Iranians are coming to Christ, and that is burgeoning at this point in time. That's right. Fantastic. Okay. Now, what is the cost to an Iranian to come out of Islam and accept Christ? What kind of things can happen to them in that process? Uh, there, there is some family persecution, but it's not normal. Um, in other countries, as I shared, it's normal. Most of the persecution comes from society from fa uh, family and friends. In Iran, they already have rejected Islam. Either they embrace Islam, uh, embrace Christianity, or they say, oh, it, it's good for you, maybe not me. But the cost is uh, the persecution from government. The government is alarmed that Christianity is growing, and they're afraid of that growth. That's why there is a persecution in Iran. And the last two years, they have declared publicly war against house churches. Two years ago, they said, uh, the supreme leader said, the uh, house churches are a threat to our national security. And since then, there has been arrest of hundreds of house church leaders. The building churches have been closed. That persecution is a reaction. Christianity is growing and it's out of their hand and they don't know what to do with it. So they do violence because there's nothing else they can do. Christianity is growing. Another cost, it would be uh, losing their jobs. Um, many people at jobs, when they find out that they're Christians, uh, again, it's, it's not really a, a faith issue, it's not really an Islam against Christianity issue. At workplace, it's mostly political. I want your, your job. I want to be, get your raise and, and promote it instead of you. It's a lot of motivation is not really Islamic because most people have do, are done with Islam. So, yeah, and now we hear a lot about imprisonment and persecution and things like that as well. And that has stepped up over the last two years is what you, you're seeing. That's right. And uh, Saeed, uh, the face of persecution in Iran, is my relative. He, he's married to my niece. And um, some people I know are in jail. And when I hear their stories, I consider them my heroes of faith. They're, they're, they're just amazing how under, uh, under pressure, under torture, they do not deny Christ. Yes, Saeed Ab yeah. Abedini, correct? Yes, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, now, how do Iranians become discipled if the home churches are being shut down by the government? Uh, the discipleship is a great question, and that's the greatest need of church in Iran. They have closed the building churches. The house churches have been closed. And even those who, uh, that exist, they're not that strong. Here, usually led by somebody who is just a few months older than the, the rest of them. I mean, in, in faith, doesn't know the Bible. So discipleship is a challenge. How do we get there uh, to help them? We found television is number one and internet number two. Um, to get with television, to get into people's homes. And not just, the good thing about television is 
is that you just don't tell them, uh, you can show them. We show them how to treat each other. We show them a house church setting. We show them how to witness to others. So it's um, basically through television, we are uh, encouraging them. We are showing them how to live a Christian life. And then chat rooms and internet. And yeah. some of the Iranian Christians are paying attention to the prophecies in the Bible in Ezekiel 38 about Persia and in Jeremiah 49 about Elam. And tell me a little bit about that. Are you teaching that on your program to them and trying to familiarize them with that? Oh, definitely. That's the future of Iran, good and bad. We see war. We see war in uh, Ezekiel 38. We see war in Jeremiah 49. Uh, and so we prepare them, bad news, but also good news, that God says at the end, I will set my throne in Iran. I will restore the fortune. So we prepare them. I have a weekly program where I correspond the news of the week to the future of Iran according to the Bible. So we yeah, educate them. Also, another thing, we teach them not to hate the Jews, not to hate any people group. So there is a, a hatred of Jews in Islamic countries and in Iran also. So one thing we do on the program, not that we are pro-Israel or pro-anything, we are pro-Jesus, but we help them to get rid of that hatred towards all nations, especially Israel and Jews. Right, now, uh, and just yeah. the closing couple of moments we have for this segment, what is Turkey's involvement now? You'd mentioned to me in the past that a lot of the Iranian Christians are getting into Turkey because it's easy to get into Turkey or easier. And, and there's some home churches in Turkey, is that correct? Right. Um, uh, Iranians by hundreds of thousands, uh, some say 500,000, some say one, up to one million refugees, Iranian refugees are in Turkey. One reason is they don't need visa. It's automatic three month stay. So they go there, they stay there, they apply for asylum in other countries. Um, and many of them are Christians, but they get there, they, they have to wait weeks, months, sometimes years. So what, how do they spend their time? They start ministering and forming churches and house churches. Yeah. And when the Iranian Christians have been through a period of three months and discipleship, what happens? Do some go, try to get back to Iran? Do some try to go out into the nations of the world? That's a good question. Some of, them, uh, some of them get convicted and they go back. But most of them, they came out to find freedom um, and they looking to come to Europe or to U.S. But there are some who are convicted and they go back and uh, serve the Lord. Yeah. Great. Well, thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. It's been a pleasure to have you on. God bless you, Bill.